books are in the foyer. If you have not picked those up, please pick those up after the service today. And if not, what's left over, Tony will have to mail out. So please pick those up if you would, please. Also, just as a reminder, in the classroom now at the end of the hall over here, there is what we call a free table, and there's items in there that might be an interest to you. So I would suggest you maybe stop in there once in a while and see what's on the table. I know uh, our brother Wayne put a uh, strong sign coordinates in there today. So if anybody is needing a strong sign coordinates or know of someone that does, there's one on the table for anyone to take at this time. Also a reminder, next Sunday is the last Sunday of the month. There'll be potluck right after the 11 o'clock worship hour. So please plan to stay and attend for potluck. And after potluck, the ladies of the congregation will gather in the gathering room back here off the foyer about 1.30 to spend time in prayer as they would uphold the congregation and our families. So be mindful of that and attend if at all possible. Also, uh, talking about uh, upholding in prayer, our brother Larry Driscoll uh, is in the hospital. He uh, had a hip replacement on Valentine's Day of all days. So uh, the surgery was supposed to take an hour and a half to two hours, but it took like six almost. So they had some complications that they had to deal with, but uh, he is in center point still. And once he leaves there, he'll be going to Mid-America Rehab where he's been in the past. So uh, if you get a chance, opportunity, I'm sure Larry would enjoy uh, uh, some time well spent with him in the hospital as he recovers. So he's in center point. Our brother Mike Ferris, as I understand, is still out at St. Luke's East and Lee, East and Lee Summit. So I need to continue to remember uh, our brothers and sisters of the congregation uh, uphold him in prayer. Our vacation church school will be June 17th to 21st this year. Uh, if you can help out with that, if you would contact Rachel Monroy, I'm sure she would appreciate all the help that she can get regarding vacation church school. Also, as again, reminder, October 18th to 20th uh, at Camp Donovan will be our congregational retreat. Uh, please mark your calendars for that so we can get ready for that. We'll get more information as time uh, draws closer to that date. Our theme is Give a Reason for the Hope that is in You, October 18th to 20th at Camp Donovan. Also, just a last reminder, once again, I would encourage you that if you use the church or facilities here for any event or activity, please make sure that uh, the lights are turned off. Make a trip throughout the upstairs and downstairs. Uh, as I come to Blue Springs throughout the week, I always make a pass by the church. And last week, again, as I came by on Tuesday, there were lights in the fireside room were all left on. Downstairs in the fellowship hall were left on. Thermostats were still kicked up to a high temperature. So please, if you use the facilities, it doesn't seem like a lot, but if we don't uh, turn them off, it kind of adds up over a year's time. So just be mindful of that as, a, as good stewards of our facility that if you use it, please make sure that everything is turned off and locked up uh, when you're done using the church. And it's, it's here to be used, and that's what we want to use it for. But please make sure everything is locked up and turned off as you would leave. Any other announcements this morning that I might have missed? Would you bow with me? Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we would uh, thank you for this day and uh, for the opportunity once again to come in thy house and to worship. We're thankful, Father, for our congregation that you've blessed us with and the uh, ability that we have to gather here and, and to worship you. Father, we would pray for our, our brothers and sisters, those that are in need, uh, those that are in hospitals, those who are at home that are going through uh, health issues and difficult times. Might you bless them, Father, bring that peace and comfort into their lives. And we pray, Father, you would attend us this day even as we've come to worship. Might you bless us that our hearts would be drawn unto you, that we'd be able to uh, hear clearly those words that uh, you would have for us this day. Father, we do praise you and thank you and do ask for your blessings upon us. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning. On behalf of my brothers, we welcome you this morning to the house of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I'll draw your attention to the bulletin briefly. Um, 
the hymn 105 will be sung during our offertory. And uh, our closing hymn, and I'll let uh, Wayne explain more on that, will be changed if you want to write down hymn number 98. That'll be our closing hymn for the day. And I have to apologize to my brother Chuck. Uh, I don't know if that's my doing or uh, or what happened there, but it's uh, spelled, his name is spelled wrong, so I apologize to my brother Chuck. And it's amazing how our Heavenly Father works. For the last week, I've been uh, struggling to bring an opening scripture of thought. And up until early this morning, I had a different one picked out until I came upon this one, and it spoke to me. And I pray, and it's my prayer that it speaks to you as well. It comes to us from the book of Alma, chapter 3, verse 62. Now this is Alma speaking unto his people. Behold, I say unto you, that the good shepherd doth call you, yea, in his own name he doth call you, which is the name of Christ. This is my testimony before I stand before you. The Heavenly Father is very pleased as he looks down upon his creation that we have heard his voice and more importantly, and to our Father, we have responded to his voice. For today we have gathered as one to sing and praise and to worship our God. It is also my testimony that we may continue to hear the voice of our God through our brother Wayne this day. So I'd ask that you may continue to abode him in your prayers.
God our Father. How great is your name and greatly to be praised. How wonderful is your power and your love for us. And as a way we have sung of different qualities of the Spirit, we would invite you to attend those qualities with us today. That you would be with us as we sing and we pray and worship. I would pray for uh, our brother Mark as he presides, and particularly uh, Josh and our, our brother Wayne. Uh, would pray that uh, your spirit attend Wayne and uh, give him what he needs and uh, strengthen him and allow his words to be your words as he speaks. That not only might we be here and attend and listen, <clears throat> But this, this might also be a time of worship in spirit and in truth. Be with us now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you bow me in prayer, please? Our loving Heavenly Father, we continue to come this day to uh, hear thy voice. And Father, we, uh, we come also the day of glad hearts, with love in our hearts for you and our fellow man, Father. We thank thee this day for the great blessings you have bestowed upon us in our lives, and we ask that you may continue to, uh, to go before us, to be with us, to guide and direct us. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you in the, the house of worship that you provided. And we pray also, Father, for the needs of those that are within these walls, but also, Father, the needs of those that um, are not here this day, the ones we call our family and our friends. So, Father, we would ask that you would continue to bless them and uphold us, hold us on each and every one of us, to see to our earthly needs, Father. I ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.
opening scripture, I have two that I've selected. Um, one is from the Psalms 46. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth shall be moved, and though the mountains shall be carried into the midst of the sea, and the waters thereof roar, being troubled, and the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. For Zion shall come, and God shall be in her midst, and she shall not be moved. Come behold the works of the Lord, what desolation she shall make in the earth in the latter days. He maketh wars to cease <clears throat> unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear sunder. He burneth the chariot with fire and saith unto all nations, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted <clears throat> among the heathen and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts shall be with us, the God of Jacob, our refuge. And then the second verse uh, comes from uh, Doctrine and Covenants, section 98, uh, 4F. Let your hearts be comforted concerning Zion, for all flesh is in mine hands. Be still and know that I am God. As I was... Uh, Preparing for this, pondering and thinking about what to bring, the, the phrase, uh, be still and know that I am God, uh, is one that kept, kept coming to me. And uh, I kind of pondered that and think, well, what, what does it take to be still and, and know that he is God? Uh, we have uh, a lot of turmoil and chaos in our lives, in our own lives, and in this world. Um, we have to have peace to be in the spirit, but how do we get there? And uh, I, uh, I've chosen uh, four different individuals in Scripture that uh, found themselves in pretty difficult or uh, uh, chaotic situations uh, where there would be. I would, for me, it would, it, uh, would be very anxious. And, uh, and then how they manage it, though. And I'm just going to give a very uh, brief, uh, like, fingernail sketch of, this, of their situation. And the first is uh, uh, the prophet Elisha. And this comes from the sixth chapter of Second Kings. And uh, the king of Syria was at war with, uh, with Israel. And his problem was is that uh, Israel always seemed to be one step ahead. They seemed to know what he was going to do before he did it, and uh, he could never make any progress. And uh, so he called all of his servants together to council and was asking them, uh, who here is the traitor? Basically, he's saying, who's the traitor in here? He knows what we're going to do. The, the king of Israel knows what we're going to do before we even do it. And one of his servants spoke up and, and said, uh, uh, it's not us. It's not us. Uh, he said that Elisha, the prophet in Israel, tells the king what you say even in your bedchamber. So he knows what you're saying before, before uh, you hardly know you've said it. And uh, he always warns the king of Israel. And so uh, the king of Syria was uh, quite upset by it and uh, he said that he would, uh, he wanted to spy. He said, spy and find out where he's at that I may fetch him. And so they found where uh, Elisha was. And of course, it probably wasn't a surprise to Elisha that they were coming for him. <laughs> but uh, he sent by night, he sent a whole army with horses and chariots and, and a whole host of men. And they surrounded the city where Elisha was. And uh, Elisha's servant or his his scribe being the prophet, uh, arose early in the morning and he saw the, uh, all the horses and the chariots and the, the army there, all basically there to kidnap Elisha. And uh, he, he was kind of in panic mode and he went to Elisha and he says, what are we going to do? What are we, how are we gonna, what are we going to do about this? What shall we do? And Elisha answered, fear not, for they that are with us are more than they that are with them. And 
Then he prayed, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw and beheld the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. So Elisha wasn't uh, concerned. He, he wasn't all stressed out by the situation. He was in the spirit, and he knew that he was going to be protected. The Lord was going to take care of him, and that's exactly what did, uh, how he handled that situation. Uh, my next uh, individual would be, well, individuals would be Paul and Silas when they were uh, preaching, preaching the gospel. And uh, basically they got sideways with, with some of the locals and the locals took them uh, to the magistrate. And the magistrate, after they had um, made their complaint against them, the magistrates caused that their clothes would be stripped of their clothes and they were beaten. And they were beaten with many stripes, it says. And then they were taken to jail and put in jail. And they told the jailer, you know, watch these guys, don't let them go. And uh, so he put them, it says, in the innermost part of the prison. And uh, then he put their legs in stocks. So basically they were put in the dungeon and their legs were in stocks where they couldn't move. And yet it was at midnight. What were they doing in that situation? After they'd been stripped of their clothes, they were beaten. They were in the dungeon, they were in stock. They were praying and then they were singing praises to God. And we all know the story. They were singing those praises to God and there was a great earthquake and the doors of the jail opened and their, uh, all of the bands, all the, the things that were binding them were, were loosened and they were free. And uh, the jailer was, as we know the story, the, the jailer was awakened by the, by the earthquake and he went and when he saw the doors of the jail were open, he just knew all the prisoners were gone, and he drew his sword, and he was going to kill himself. And, and Paul, of course, yells to him and says, no, don't hurt yourself. Don't you? We're all here. And then that very night, that jailer and his whole household was converted to the Lord and were baptized that very night. But again, Paul and Silas, in a difficult situation, rather than fretting about it and, and being disturbed and, and anxious and uh, just uh, in, a, in that difficult situation, they... They prayed to the Lord, and then they sang praises to God, and he delivered them. Uh, the next one that I want to share would be um, uh, with Alma, Alma and Amulek. And we all, we all know that story where they were preaching. They'd gone to the, the land of Ammonihah, I think it's pronounced. But, uh, they were preaching there because they had turned completely away from the Lord, and uh, their preaching wasn't well received, particularly by the, the higher class, the upper class, but uh, they did have some converts that, and as they continued to preach, the, uh, the authorities uh, became more and more upset with them, and so they, they took them, and they, the men in the uh, Alba and Amulek and the, and the men that had been converted, they separated them from apart, and they took their wives and their children and they threw them in the fire, and they were burning them, literally burning them to death. And then they took Alma and Amulek to witness this terrible, terrible thing. They were also burning the scriptures. And as Alma and Amulek are there, Amulek says, how can we witness such a terrible, terrible scene? And uh, shall we, by the power that's in us, and he said, can we? But he said, With the, by the power that's in us, shall we deliver them from this? And Alma Again, being in the spirit, had the, had the spirit. Well, he said, "The spirit constraineth me." He said, "No, we can't. So we don't want to save them." He said, "The Lord is receiving them unto Himself in glory, and the Lord is letting this happen so that His judgments, when He ju when He judges these people, His judgments will be just." But again, in a very, I would say, very difficult and uh, chaotic situation. Alma was calm in the spirit and uh, was able to be obedient to what the Lord wanted him to do. And then the fourth one would be, uh, it's in uh, Helaman, when uh, the Nephites had become so wicked and there were the Lamanites who had been converted and, and they were more righteous and they followed the law much more closely. And uh, the Lord sent Samuel, the Lamanite, to preach to the Nephites and uh, he, was, uh, he was telling them everything they didn't want to hear. And uh, 
he was on the wall, and he was on the wall delivering his message. They were trying to kill him. They were throwing stones at him. They were shooting arrows at him and that. But again, because he was doing what the Lord had, had called him to do, he was uh, able to, to manage that situation and, and he delivered. He was able to just truly fulfill his calling in this uh, chaotic and terrible situation. Uh, and what what do we do now? You know, we're our all, our whole world is in uh, chaos and turmoil. Uh, we see terrible thing happen, terrible things happening all the time. There are certainly wars around the world in Ukraine and certain parts, and most notably in the Middle East. Uh, the October seventh attack on Israel, where Hamas invaded Israel and they killed over twelve hundred innocent Israelis. They uh, just the glee in their eyes, if you've seen any of the video, as they were killing and beheading infants and that the terrible things they were doing. Uh, these things are happening in our lifetime right now. There's Christian persecution all around the world. There are many places in the world where uh, it's illegal to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've caught worshiping, you can be put, to gal, uh, put in jail or even... Uh, killed for worshiping uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, they don't have the, the freedoms that we have, but even even in our own country, our own nation is becoming uh, morally corrupt, uh, both politically and socially. I mean, we're a mess. Uh, the changes, there have been radical, radical changes in our culture, in our society uh, since I was a kid growing up, and these changes are continuing, and they... Uh, uh, they seem to be accelerating in the uh, separation of church and state that uh, was put in our Constitution has been taken to a far extreme where they removed the Lord from virtually every aspect of our lives. Um, there is uh, corruption. Uh, I mean, our nation was established on biblical principles. The, the Bible was the standard. Uh, there was a moral standard. Um, there was a, it was a measure, everything was measured and weighed against what the scripture said. And uh, that, uh, that corruption is, is crept into all parts of our life now. There's a double standards for, for virtually everything, uh, unethical businesses that may keep, you know, to keep, uh, uh, keep um, two sets of books, for instance. They have the one that tells them really what's going on in their business. Then they have the one that they, they show the public or... Uh, Perhaps uh, businesses, uh, just another little form of corruption with, with scales. Their scales are calibrated to actually measure wrong where you think you're getting 16 ounces and you're paying for 16 ounces, but you're really only getting 13 or something. But there, there's corruption in all, all forms of our, our society. And Isaiah warns, uh, uh, woe unto those who call evil good and good evil. But uh, Satan, through his proxies, have uh, made awful, sinful changes. It's not a natural thing. Uh, through our schools and libraries, um, through music and videos, uh, through the Internet, with like TikTok and, and even Disney, uh, they're promoting things that are evil and uh, are degradating our society. I... Uh, Actually, I didn't know how how naive I am or how sheltered I am in my life or the way I live my life. I spend three days a week at my office and pretty much see people that are pretty much like me, like-minded in that. Um, I go to my property a lot to go to my, what I call the farm, um, pretty often every week for two or three days. And it's very peaceful down there. The majority of the time, I'm by myself, and uh, uh, I don't really didn't recognize everything that was that's going on around me. But uh, last uh, last week, a uh, week before last, what it was it, a week ago Friday, um, after I left the office, I, I went and I picked up my 13 year old grandson, and he went. He and I went to the farm. He loves to go down there with me. And we went down there to spend the weekend, and uh, we're visiting, and, and he starts mentioning things to me that I, you know, he's a, 
he's in Independence Public Schools, 13 years old, and uh, he started talking to me about the trans kids. And then he had to explain to me what the trans kids were and that they're cutters and they make cuts on their arms and like that. And he talked about uh, children that uh, they're at the school that identify as animals. And they call them furries. And Brian would know all about this, I'm sure, and, and maybe others that work in the schools. But this was completely new to me. And so as I've started talking with um, different individuals during this past week, it's, like, it's much more prevalent than I thought, than I, than I ever imagined. Um, even in some schools, they'll have litter boxes in the restrooms where the furries can relieve themselves that way instead of in the toilets because they identify as animals. In some schools, they ask the children what pronoun they want to be identified as. Um, found that uh, 25% of American teenagers and young adult identify themselves as something other than their birth gender. Um, a far smaller percentage identify themselves as Christian. Uh, a third of all American teenage girls have contemplated suicide. It's because of the peer pressure and social media and all of those things that are going on. And uh, just mental illness among our youth is, is becoming epidemic. And it's because of what we've allowed to creep into our, into our lives and into our society. And uh, there's got to be an antidote. We, we have to. I mean, I pray for my children or my grandchildren, literally, every, I know you all do. I pray for my grandchildren every day. And I've redoubled those prayers now. And the Lord somewhat comforted me somewhat concerning my grandson, uh, as he seems to be very level-headed in that. And the Lord brought to mind my, uh, my own patriarchal blessing that I received uh, actually back in the fall of 1970, over 50 years ago. But in my patriarchal blessing, I was told that, uh, that the Lord has been planning for my days on earth from the very beginning, and that every detail of my life had been, been made available and planned to me because of his, his guidance and direction, and that it wasn't by chance that I was born into the day and time that I was or to the parents I was or uh, that I came into contact with the gospel at an early age. And, and the Lord let me know that that, that's, that same promise is for my grandson. He was born here. He's been equipped, and I told him that. I told him that he has to be faithful to the Lord Jesus, that he has to um, has to just you know stay on the right course, that the Lord has equipped him and has, and has equipped him with what he needs to be faithful to him, that he will, you know, make support him in that. But with with everything that goes on in our lives, you know, how do how do we find that peace that we need to uh, to know God and to uh, to find to find Him to be to be still and know that He's God. Uh, in Philippians, uh, Paul tells us that uh, he says, "Be afflicted in nothing." So, in other words, uh, don't be anxious about anything. Uh, he understands the ramifications of that, of uh, being anxious and, and worrisome about things. And taking his, rep his, his recommendation of um, basically taking his, his counsel to be anxious or afflicted by, don't be afflicted by anything, we shouldn't take it as a recommendation, but really it's a warning. And uh, when you wrap your mind around your circumstances, you can't control what's going on around you, and you, it, it causes to become anxious about everything. Basic, Paul offers uh, three antidotes to, to that. And uh, number one is prayer. And you have, we have to present our worries and our concerns to God. We've got to let go of the mental turmoil. We have to trust God's sovereign power over our circumstances. He knows our days. He knows our, our, our steps. He's planned for us. We just need to be faithful to him. So prayer and then petition, which is all part of prayer, make an earnest request of the one who has authority to intervene. 
He has the authority to make change. His power is strong enough to mend anything that's broken in your life. And then praise, giving thanks, uh, actually protects our hearts. Uh, adoration and praise to our Heavenly Father uh, loosens anxiety's grip. Uh, we have to thank God for everything, thank Him in everything, even for a breathtaking sunset or uh, flowers blooming or just a warm blanket on a cool day. There's, we can always find something to thank our Heavenly Father for. But uh, our, Lord, uh, our Lord died on the cross for us, not because we're worthy, but he died on the cross to make us worthy. And we become worthy, I think, by submitting to him in complete and total humility and then enduring to the end. And uh, in the Gospel of John, John, Jesus, uh, I'm not there. And I'm not there. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, when he was be shortly before the end of his ministry on earth, he was telling him he would send the, the comforter, but he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, but give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We have to have that peace in Jesus Christ to be able to uh, do his will and to uh, accomplish what he has for us and to, to be still. And I thought that uh, just uh, to, to close, I'm going to reread the, uh, my opening scripture. God is our refuge and strength, a present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, for Zion shall, <clears throat> shall come, and God shall be in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. The earth, <clears throat> uh, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he shall make in the earth in the latter days. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot with fire and fire, and he saith unto all nations, Be still and know that I am God. The time is coming uh, when all nations will be coming against Israel, and uh, that's prophesied, and that's when the Lord says that his arm will be bared, his holy arm will be made bare, and all nations will know that he is God. So we need to endure, but realizing that we are in the latter days and the time is coming when righteousness will sweep the earth as a flood and the earth, we know who wins in the end. And after I, I had asked Mark actually to change the closing hymn to 98, I I just, as I was preparing, it just felt so uh, appropriate to me that uh, the, the words of that hymn really speak to my heart, and uh, I just asked him if we could make that change, and he very graciously did that. So we're going to close with hymn number 98.
My kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, as uh, we come to the end of the service, Lord, I would pray that your spirit would accompany us back to our homes, for that spirit that was welcoming this morning would go with us. And Lord, I would pray that uh, your spirit would be with us throughout the rest of this week, when we rise, when we go to bed. And Lord, may we continue to pray for one another. For Lord, we know there are some that could not be here, whether it's uh, sickness or other things. Lord, uh, we would lift them up this day, um, heal them of those things that would keep them down. Again, Lord, we give you thanks for this wonderful sanctuary, a place that um, we can come and freely worship your name. Lord, I just give you thanks, and I pray all these things in the most precious name, even Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.